If you have a weak stomach, I would just leave now. Because today, we're going to be reviewing cupcakes. And I don't know if you've ever heard of this story, but if you're on this channel, <laughs> I'm assuming you have. Now, of course, my reviews are always very comedic, and I'm going to do my damn best. <laughs> Trust me, I'm going to do my very, very best to not have this be extremely gory and disgusting, but there's just, that's not possible. I'm sorry, it's, it's not possible. So let's get started, kids. I'm about to scar you for life, if I haven't done that already. <clears throat> oh, by the way, uh, this video will 100% get demonetized. There is absolutely no way in, in, no way in hell that this would ever be monetized. And if it was, hell must have frozen over. <laughs> because, uh, huh. oof. Oh, God. Even I wouldn't monetize this. I'm going to try, but <laughs> God knows we shouldn't be. I'll leave that to them. That's their job, not mine. You be quiet. Don't you start with me. The air was warm, the sun was shining, and every pony in Ponyville was having a glorious day. The town square was bustling, and crowded and busy ponies filled the streets. All the town, or er, all the pony folk. <laughs> <laughs> All the pony folks seem to have somewhere specific to be. All except Rainbow Dash. Her place was in the sky. She tore freely through the air, speeding one way and the next, buzzing the treetops and racing the wind. The blue pegasus swooped over a schoolyard, much to the delight of the children, then climbed several hundred feet and dove, streaking downward as fast as she could. Seconds after, it he... Shut the fuck up over there, I swear! Let's just take it from the... Hi, I'm back. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Where were we? Yeah. The blah, 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 blah. seconds before hitting the ground, her wings flew open and she pulled up back into the clear blue. Rainbow felt alive. Suddenly, Dash remembered that she had somewhere to be. She was supposed to meet with Pinkie Pie in five minutes. Dash had gotten so caught up in her exercises that she'd nearly forgotten that Pinkie had asked to meet her at Sugar Cube Corner at three. Uh, I, I know it's a pony thing, but doesn't that kind sound like a prostitute corner? Just a little bit? Maybe? No? Just me? Okay. Pinky hadn't said why or what they'd be doing, but Dash knew that with Pinky, it could be anything. Dash wasn't sure if she really wanted to go, though. She was so engaged with her stunts that she thought about blowing Pinky off to continue flying. But Dash's conscience got the better of her. She knew that it would hurt Pinky's feelings. After all, Pinky had said it was going to be something special just for the two of them. Dash considered it and thought, why not? The grammar on this is fucking awful. Um, I'm gonna... There's no... They just quoted somebody as saying something, but it's just in the middle of a big block of text. There's... They put quotes around it, and they didn't capitalize the beginning of the quote, and it's just in the middle of everything, and it's just like, blah, and I fucking hate this. This is egregious. I want you to die. I'm just... <laughs> uh, where are my knives? What did she have to lose? Hell, it might be more pranking. Pinky, wait, the. Pinky might have found a bunch more fun stuff to pull on folks, and they'd had so much fun the last time. Dash kicked it knowing what's coming later. I cannot even fucking imagine what happened last time. 
if you know how the story goes. I, I know, I know. Stuff doesn't start happening till later in the story. Don't give me that shit. Don't give me that bullshit. This kind of fuck, this kind of fuck shit does not just come out of nowhere. Uh-uh. No. That's not how shit works. <clears throat> Dash kicked into overdrive to make up for lost time and sped to her appointment. When Dash walked into the store, she was immediately greeted by her host, who was bouncing in excitement. Yay, you're here! I've been waiting all day, said the jumping pony. Okay, so see, this is the problem that I have. Right here, they did capitalize the beginning of this quote, but once again, there is, it doesn't go to the next line, it, like, like how you're supposed to start a new paragraph when you start to quote somebody saying something and then go to another person saying something. You're supposed to go to the next line. The only time you're allowed to stay on the same line after you've started the quote is if you've already begun the new paragraph where the quote is. Like, this is, this is basic. This is basic English. And I am now starting to see why it was taken off of the original website. I'm having to read it off of some fucking QuoteTV.com shit. Uh, quote, no, not QuoteTV. I don't fucking do shit. You know. I've had very little sleep in the last few days. Um, yeah, maybe I should. I'm back again. Don't you just love seeing that beautiful face? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, God, I'm losing my fucking mind more every day. Sorry if I'm a little late, Pinky. I was doing my afternoon exercises and lost track of time. So my cat was messing with my Funkos in there, and uh, they keep knocking this one over, and, you know, I just keep getting uh, more and more convinced that one of my animals might be homophobic. So that's wonderful. On to the story again. And I'll just set you right back there so that you have a nice little home for the piggy dog. Where the fuck were we? Um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> he literally forgot. God damn it. <laughs> Pinky giggled and responded in a gleefully reassuring tone. Oh, that's a god damn it with this fucking punctuate. Okay, I need to stop. I need to stop. But god damn it with this punctuation. Okay. I'm starting to hit things I shouldn't hit on the area, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna calm down now. <clears throat> oh, that's okay, you're here now. What's well, a few more minutes? I've been so excited thinking about all fun stuff we're going, Do you want to try that again? Let's see, I need to... I must be high. <laughs> of course I am, but that's not the point. Oh, uh, no, no. Okay. Mm -hmm, yep, mm -hmm. okay, I see. He's just really fucking dumb! They're just really fucking dumb! Okay. No, yeah, I read that right. I've been so excited thinking about all fun stuff we're gonna do. I haven't stopped bouncing since I... <laughs> what? Okay, this bitch. Okay, come on. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on! Please, stop. 
<laughs> Don't make me do this. You could still stop right now, you know? I mean, I, I could go in there and, and watch WandaVision, you know? I, that sounds like a better night for me than to sit here and... Uh, whatever. I haven't stopped bouncing since I woke up. I mean, I almost forgot... I almost forgot to breathe, I've been so happy. As you, as you do. You know. Dash gave a slightly uncomfortable laugh, as I would. Good, okay, at least somebody's got their goddamn sanity in this. She had always appreciated Pinkie Pie's friendly, outgoing way of life, but Pinkie's overabundant enthusiasm almost creeped her out, as it is creeping me out. Dash maintained a polite ex... There's... What the fuck is that? There's something in between the A and the polite... Whatever. A polite expression, however. If Pinky was this worked up, whatever she had planned must be good. So, you ready to get started, Rainbow Dash? I've got everything all ready, the pink pony said. Dash psyched herself up. You betcha, Pinky. So, what do you got planned? Oh, that's not. Okay, so we don't even know the difference between plain and planned. Are we fucking four? You know, that's not very fair. I was reading far better than that at age four. I'm insulting so many people. I'm so sorry about that if I insulted you. I insulted myself. It's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. I'm not okay. It's not okay. Somebody help me! I need to stop getting too close to the camera. I'm starting to knock over equipment that shouldn't be knocked over. <laughs> Watch, at some point in this video, I'm gonna just hit something and this camera's just gonna go whoo, right off the fucking computer. Yeah, that's exactly what's about to happen. Uh, it's, it's, it's coming. It's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. Because, you know, nobody really knows more about video making than me. Oh god. Okay, here we go. What do you got planned? We gonna prank somebody? I got a couple of good ones I've been thinking about. Or maybe you've got some stunts you think I should try. Or perhaps making cupcakes, Pinky happily announced. Baking? Dash was disappointed. Pinky, you know I'm no good at baking. Remember last time? Are we about to get into some, like, Game of Thrones, Arya Stark type kind of shit? Or, like, is that just... Just me? Just me? Just, just me? Okay. <clears throat> God, I have a fucked up head. Oh, that's not a problem at all. I only need your... I only need your help making them. I'll be doing most of the work, Pinky explained. How... I mean, I know what she means. But... Did she really not have any questions? Is... Are we going with that? We're, we're, we're going with this? We're going with this? We're going with this? We're going with this. Dash thought about it for a second. Well, all right. I guess that's okay. What exactly do you need me to do? That's the spirit. Here you go. Pinky handed Dash a cupcake. At this point, I'd be like, bitch, this bitch is gonna drug me. I don't care if this is a kid's show. I don't care what the fuck they've done in the past. This bitch is going to fucking drug you. And so she does, you know? I mean, as you do, as you do, as you do, as you do, as you do. 
Dash was puzzled. I thought I was helping you bake. You will be. I made this one just for you before you got here. So is this like taste testing or something? Sorta, Pinky said. Dash shrugged and popped the pastry in her mouth. She chewed a bit and swallowed. Not bad. Okay, now what? Dash asked. Okay. I need you to sit down if you're not sitting down. Because this is my favorite part. My favorite line in this entire fucking story. Everyone that showed it to me, when they showed it to me, they were so freaked out by it. And I was laughing my fucking ass off. Maybe I'm a sick bastard. Maybe I shouldn't be allowed to be around certain people. But it's okay. Because <laughs> I do things like, oh. Oh. Hello there. Well, somebody decided that they wanted to be a part of the video. <laughs> Everybody, if you don't know, this is Gunner. Yeah. Say hi, buddy. Yeah. This is my buddy. Come lay down in here. <sighs> he is the most perfect dog in the world. I'll fight you if you think differently. <laughs> And now we have the cats. Oh, wonderful. We have the whole crew. You, since you want to make a lot of noise, you come here. No. <sighs> this is Binks. Say hello, Binks. Hmm. Here, go lay down. All right. So now we've got the whole crew. Lay down. Lay down. Get away from gay Batman. <laughs> God, I love saying that. Okay. So here we go. My favorite fucking line. This makes me laugh my ass off. Now, Pinky informed her, you take a nap. God, that's good cringe. Puzzled, Dash opened her mouth but felt instantly lightheaded. A wave of dizziness washed over her. The world spun and seconds later she collapsed to the floor. When Dash regained conscious, er, consciousness, she found herself in a dark room. She tried to shake her head but found that a taut leather strap held it firmly in place. She struggled to move, but braces around her chest and limbs glued her to a rack formed by a series of sturdy planks, which spread her legs wide apart. I think somebody had some things to work through when they were writing this, and I don't think they ever did quite work through them. I don't know if I want them to work through them. I don't know if you want them to work through them. <laughs> Dash's wings were the only part of her not tied down, and they fluttered frantically while she tried to escape. As she writhed, Pinky jumped suddenly into her line of sight. Goody, you're awake! Now we can get started! Pinky stated gleefully. She bounced into the darkness and quickly reappeared, pushing a small cart covered with a cloth. Pinky, what's going on? I can't move! And you're fucking crazy! This It doesn't say that, but I'd be like, bitch, what the fuck?! I ain't saying, Pinky, what's going on? I'd be like, bitch, I am tidy, fuck up. I'm gonna just close that. I think the cat's still in here. I don't think, I don't know, he might have left. I don't know, I don't care. He can stay out there if he wants. I'd be like, bitch, I am tied the fuck up. What is going on? Are you high? People just don't stop fucking eating. It's just never let me make any fucking videos. And I swear, it's just like one day I'm just gonna snap. Or maybe I already have. <laughs> well, duh, that's because you're tied down, chided Pinky. 
That's why you can't move. I didn't think you'd need to be told that. Wow, what a bitch. <laughs> but why? What's happening? I thought you said I was helping make cupcakes. You're helping. See, I ran out of the special ingredient and I need you to get more. Special ingredient? Dash was now breathing heavily and started to panic. What special ingredient? <laughs> Pinky giggled and responded, You, silly! Dash's eyes widened and her face contorted in fear. Then she started to laugh and said in a voice bordering on hysteria, Haha, you really got me there, Pinky. I mean, tricking me into thinking I'm gonna get made into a cupcake? I gotta tell you, this is the best prank yet. You win, you're the best. Okay. So many things are wrong with that. So many things are wrong with that. I can't even begin to state how many things are wrong with that. Um, hmm. I'm almost afraid to upload this in today's climate. Because now, I'm afraid I'm gonna go on to like Leon Lush or like Pyro or some com commentator's channel now. Or, or like Critical, whatever the fuck. Pick your poison. And I'm gonna see somebody making a... Baking my friend into a cupcake prank. And I am terrified that that will be a real thing now. Like, I, I realize that people in the real world, the regular, normal <laughs> world, normal, don't exactly listen or watch creepypasta videos or reviews of them, much less, but I am still scared. That one motherfucker will actually hear me talking about this story and be like, that shit will get viral. Baking my friend into a cupcake prank. Fuck my life. I can't even. I, I, I can't even. I can't even. Pinky only giggled. Aw, oh, thanks, Dash, but I haven't done any pranks today, so I can't accept your praise. Dash was struggling again. Pinky, come on, this isn't funny. You crazy fucking bitch. Then why were you laughing? Good question. Before Dash could answer, Pinky grabbed the cloth and whipped it off the cart. On the cart was a tray containing various sharp medical tools and knives, carefully organized and wickedly sharp, as well as a large medical bag. So, I am getting strong themes that this author not only had a pony fetish, not only had a gore fetish, not only had a uh, very weird fanfic fetish over these two ponies apparently getting together or something, or I don't know what this was supposed to be. Uh, just wish it never would have happened. God. It almost makes me kind of glad that the creepypasta community has all but kind of died out now. And we're all, the last of us, uh, the last of us are kind of like the last of us. We're, like, actually the last ones here, and, you know, uh... Are you okay over there? You okay? strange but anyway like we're kind of the last holdouts in a dying community that's really uh 
really kind of sad to see go, but also not, because it paved the way for a lot of other kinds of things, like what you're watching right now, for instance, without terrible stories being made after all the good ones were dried out of the well, you know? It's kind of renewing to be able to look back on these things with fonder memories because now you can be like, oh, well, yeah, I was there when it was good. I was there when when Slenderman was still scary or when Jeff the Killer was the fucking scariest thing on the internet, you know? It's, it's kind of good to be able to look back on that. But this... This... This, 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 this. This ain't it, Chief. I am not the one. And this is not it. <laughs> okay, I need to finish this. It's getting really long. These things are usually like an hour long anyways. Why the fuck do I care? I don't give a shit. Fuck! Just thought I'd get a few of those out, you know? It's always nice to just be able to scream fuck. It's always nice. Always nice. Always nice. Very therapeutic, I found. <laughs> if you've watched my gag reel, then you'll know that that happens quite a bit while I'm recording. Even though there's nobody around to hear it but me. Uh, it's it's fun. It's therapeutic, you know. It's 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 nice. It's nice. Ugh. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Dash was in full panic mode now. She was starting to hyperventilate. Her mind raced as she tried to reason with the pink pony. You can't do this. I'm your friend. I know you are, and that's why I'm so happy that you I've got you here. We get to share your last moments together. Just you and me. I'm sorry, that's basically what I... I'm just imagining that's how that ended up going. I don't think maybe... I don't think maybe that's what she was trying to go for, but that's definitely how it ended up, you know, turning out. And it's kind of freaky. But, whatever. I'm not here to be able to understand this, just to read it off and make stupid, stupid jokes that self-deprecate myself. Okay. I think that's going to be the thumbnail right there. That's going to be the thumbnail for sure. <laughs> Maybe I'll put some, uh, some of those fucking... Photoshop tears and red arrows or some some shit like that just to make it look super clickbaity and terrible like the rest of the shit on YouTube nowadays But the other ponies will wonder where I am. Yeah, the pony cops might come after you <laughs> The fuck You're a magical fucking pony Pretty sure if, he, if she's going after your dumb ass. She's gone after your friends already. I don't think this is a point of contention Rainbow Dash. I think you should be more concerned with other things at this moment that do not concern the other ponies. I think you should be more concerned with yourself. <laughs> when the clouds pile up, they'll come looking for me, and then you'll get found out. <laughs> wait, wait, is it gonna be Sherlock Pones? Ah! That was bad, I know. I, I, you can... I'll... It's okay, I'll, uh... I'll see myself out. I'm never gonna get this fucking review done. I'm gonna be stuck here forever and then I'm just never gonna fucking get it done. Somebody please just fucking help me. Just fucking help me. Just fucking. So anyways. On with the story. I've been watching too much Mac Does It lately. Just a little. Just, just a little bit much. A little bit much. A little bit. Much. A little bit just a little bit. Mmm. <clears throat> Oh, Dash, said Pinky, don't worry. There are plenty of Pegasus ponies to take care of a few clouds, and besides, no one will find out. <laughs> I'm Pinky the Ripper. I'm <laughs> I mean, how long do you think I've been doing... Oh, God. I was just joking. 
And with that ominous statement, the light suddenly came to life and revealed the rest of the room. Um. Oh, no. Those are the next words out of Dash's mouth. Those are the next words of bitch. Those are the next words out of my mouth. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. This bitch really just said, oh, no. I'm crying. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> is that the best? Is that the best you've got? Oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh no! Dash reeled in horror at the image presented to her. The room was decorated with a typical but twisted Pinkie Pie flair. <laughs> Colorful streamers of dried entrails fluttered around on the ceiling. Brightly painted skulls of all sizes were attached to the walls and organs were done up in pastels filled with helia. The bitch filled them with helium! No! <laughs> were tied to the backs of chairs. The tables and chairs were made of bones and the preserved flesh of past ponies. You can say whatever you want about me laughing at this. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the logistics of a pony, Edgeen. It's just too much, bitch. Don't fuck with me, this is too funny. Dash cringed, I cringed, upon seeing the centerpiece of the table nearest to her. The heads of four foals? I think they were supposed to be fowls, not foals. I, I don't know. I'm not a horse guy. Don't Just because I'm from Texas doesn't mean I know shit about a fucking horse. It's a fucking stereotype. We don't know. We don't all fucking ride horses. Most of us don't even know what a horse looks like. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> Most of us have never seen a horse in person, is what I was trying to say. And if we have, it was some fucking pony at a goddamn fair or something. So shut your fucking mouth. Not all of us ride horses out here. I just, that was important for me. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> So I hit my ankle on the, on the door. <laughs> Save me. So, where were we? <sighs> Gotta love that, don't you? Gotta love all the live shit that I do, right? Gotta love that squeaky ass fucking chair. We're never gonna finish this goddamn story. This story is like, oh fucking, I will get there eventually. <laughs> I'm gonna stop fucking around, okay? I'm gonna stop fucking around. Maybe. Okay, here we go. Their eyes closed as if they were sleeping, were wearing party hats made from their own skin. With a thrill of terror, Dash recognized one of them as Apple Bloss or App Apple Bloom's classmate Twist. Dash's eyes darted back and forth and then fell upon a patchwork banner hanging from the rafters. Made from several tanned pony hides. 
The words, life is a party, were scrawled on it in blood. Bitch, it better be not realistic. Dash's attention was brought back by a party horn unfurling and tickling her nose. She gaped at Pinkie Pie, who was standing right in front of her. The party pony was wearing a dress quilted from dried skin. Emblazoned with cutie marks. <laughs> so many questions! So little time! What the fuck's a cutie mark? Why was it on skin? Why? Why is any of this happening to me? <laughs> on her back fluttered six, pe six Pegasus wings. All of which different colors. As the earth pony skipped in excitement, her necklace of severed unicorn horns clacked together. Like it? Bitch said, I am queen. <laughs> like it? <laughs> like. Like it? <laughs> she said, represent, I look fucking fantastic. Somebody shoot me in the fucking face. I made it myself. Oh, did you, bitch? Desperately, Dash pleaded with the smiling pony before her. Pinky, please, I'm sorry if I did anything to you. I don't... Listen, Rainbow, I don't... I'm not even going to finish your sentence here. I don't think there's anything that's going to... Ixnay on the egging bay. Uh, not going to Irkway. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, Dash, you didn't do anything. It's just that your number came up. And, well, I don't make rules. We can't turn back now. Dash was tearing up. How could this be happening? Aw, don't be sad, Dash, said Pinky. Look, this'll cheer you up. I brought you a friend. Seemingly out of nowhere, Pinky produced a brightly painted blue and yellow skull. Oh, God. It was pony-sized, but it had a very defining feature. A beak. I'm not about to read that paragraph. Needless to say, she puppets a skull in front of her friend. And she ate him. The bitch ate her. Not like baked her into something. No, no, no. She ate her. Okay. <clears throat> Dash didn't have anything to say. She just sobbed and writhed in her tight bonds. Well, said Pinky with an air of finality. That's enough reminiscing. Time to begin. Putting down Gilda's skull, the pink pony gripped a scalpel on the cleft of her hoof and walked over to Dash's right flank. That's another thing. How do you fucking do all this with hoofs? I know you're a magical pony in a land full of talking fucking ponies that fly, but... Hmm. It does make one wonder. I mean, like... Shit. They're killing each other. It's clearly... Nothing's off the table now. Don't fucking tell me that shit now. You've already... You've already had all this happen, and now you're gonna try and save yourself? Bitch. 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 Bitch.
Placing the ragged... Oh, fuck. That's not where I was. God damn it. Without any flair, Pinky placed the blade an inch above Dash's cutie mark and began a circular cut around it. Oh, I think that's their fucking thing on the back of them. Oh, that makes that even... Dash shouted in pain and tried desperately to pull away, but the braces held her still. Finishing the incision, Pinky grabbed a curved skinning knife from the tray. Screwing up her face in concentration... I don't think that's what they meant to say. She worked it under Dash's skin and sliced the hide away from the muscle. Dash ground her teeth as she tearfully watched her flesh peel off. Pinky then moved to the other side and repeated the process process on Dash's left flank. Once she had finished, Pinky held up both cutie marks in front of her friend and started waving them like pom-poms. Why? Dash just whimpered. Her thighs burned like nothing she had felt before. Ugh. Placing the ragged patches of skin down, Pinky selected a large butcher knife and walked behind the blue pegasus. Hope you don't mind, I think I'm gonna wing it now, Pinky laughed. She grabbed left wing in her mouth and played with it for a few seconds, yanking it back so the sharp pain reignited the fire in Dash's flanks. Then, stretching the wing out, Pinky brought the blade down hard at the base. Oh god, this is so fucking fucked up. This is getting to the point now where I can't make as many jokes as I was making earlier because I'm just so fucking disgusted by all this and it's just absolutely really nasty. And it's not something that I really like to read, so we're going to keep it to a minimum. Oh, God. Instantly, Dash screamed and thrashed her appendage. The movement threw off Pinky's aim. She tried to hit the mark again but missed and carved a huge slice into Dash's back. You gotta stay still or I'll keep missing, scolded Pinky as her friend howled. Pinky took another whack and hit her target. She swung again and again, blood sprayed into the air, and Pinky realized she wasn't getting anywhere. The blade just wasn't going through the bone. Hmm, I guess I forgot to sharpen it. I'll try something else, stated Pinky matter-of-factly as she tossed the knife over her shoulder. Also, weird point now to say this, but now the grammar is correct. So you could get the grammar wrong when it wasn't super gory, but now that you've gotten into the part where it's a detailed massacre gore fic, basically, with no reason or rhyme at all, now you can be right? Well, I just, uh, yeah, okay. It's just a story. <laughs> it's just a story. It's just a story. <laughs> Through the haze of pain and tears, Dash heard the sound of a metal box opening and closing. Pinky placed the tool over the mangled flesh of the last attempt. Standing on her hind legs, she worked the saw back and forth with her front hooves. It sliced effortlessly through the bone and skin. The feeling of the jagged teeth grinding into her made Dash want to vomit. She watched numbly as her wing flew over her head and landed with a fluff on the table. Pinky moved to the next wing and started sawing. Dash didn't struggle this time. She'd given up trying to fight and focused on choking back screams of agony. Abruptly, the sawing paused. Pinky was only halfway done, the wing hanging off by a sliver. Hey, Dash, Pinky piped up. Think fast! This bitch. Mm. Suddenly, Pinky yanked the wing as hard as she could. The bone snapped, but the blue pony's skin held, then tore away. The pull ripped away a long strip of flesh all the way down Dash's back to her rump. Excuse me? 
Excuse me? To her rump. To her rump? To her fucking rump? I need a drink. I need something. Because... To her rump. Her body seized at the unexpected trauma as her pelvis tensed up. Dash felt a warm release between her legs. Oh. And her loud, unending melody of pain filled the room. Unable to catch her breath, she blacked out. Dash awoke with a gasp. Stench of her urine filled her mucus caked nostril. God, this is worse than I thought it was. Ugh. As her vision swam into focus, she saw a very pouty Pinkie Pie removing a large adrenaline needle from her chest. Stomping her hooves, she the frustrated Pinkie lashed out at her helpless victim. Didn't anybody teach you any manners? It's very rude to fall asleep when someone invites you over to spend time with them. How would you like it if I came over to your house and went to sleep? Oh, I'm sorry, Dash. You're so boring. I think I'll take a nap. You think I like always doing this by myself? I told you how excited I got when I found out you were next. I was excited to have a friend be here with me while I worked, but no. You've got to be inconsiderate, you know. I thought you were tough. I thought you could handle anything. I had full stand better than you. Do I have to baby you? Well, is that what you and you and I mean? As Pinky stopped to catch her breath, Dash blinked and sobbed softly. I'm sobbing inside and on the outside. Please, God, save me. Her back was in agony. Her sides were on fire, and there was an intense pain in one of her legs. I'm having an intense pain on the left side of my chest at the moment. As she blinked again, she saw Pinky pop something red into her mouth and began to chew. Noticing Dash's stare, Pinky quickly gulped the morsel down. What? Pinky said. Oh, this? She held up another piece. Well, while you were asleep, I got a little impatient and helped myself to a small sample. I got it from your leg. You're not bad. Wanna try some? Oh, God, no, fuck, no, oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 so much no, 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 stop it, stop it. Stop it. Please stop it. Please stop it. Without waiting for a response, Pinky shoved the strip of meat into the revolted Pegasus's mouth. Dash gagged and immediately spit it out. Pinky frowned and picked it up. If you didn't want it, you could have said no. She contemplated the discarded snotty morsel, then gulped it up. Ugh. It's not like you haven't had my cupcakes before. Okay, so we just established that they have been doing this before, so, like, is this a... You know what? I don't want to know. <sighs> Swallowing, Pinky turned her attention to a small can on the tray. 
She removed the lid, revealing it was filled with red-hot coals. Lying on top of the coals were several large nails. As the adrenaline filled her veins, Dash began to panic again. Picking up the can, Pinky walked over to Dash's left. Holding some tongs with her mouth, Pinky carefully, carefully picked up a nail and positioned it at the seam between her victim's front left leg and hoof. She then grabbed a hammer and took careful aim. Oh, no, 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 Pinky, no. The hammer came down, the nail punctured Dash's skin, the white hot burning was too much. Dash screamed as she pulled and thrashed at the braces, causing her raw skin to rub and tear. Pinky tried to line up another nail but couldn't find her aim and let out a frustrated grunt. When Pinky brought the hammer back to a wild swing, Dash burst out crying and begging. Okay, so now at some point in this, you guys might be thinking, Oh, you've read so many terrible stories, much worse than this, and you're thinking this one is the... Oh, you're getting under this spider, you... Because I know some of you are like that. And to those people, first of all, hi, how you doing? I don't care what you think. It's my opinion, and I'm going to have it whether you think it or not. But to those people in particular... Um, story, for instance, I'll give you an example. The origin of Laughing Jack is extremely similar to this story in how graphic and gruesome it is. And if you'll notice, it's also the only story I've ever put a disclaimer in front of. That's right, bitch. I put a fucking disclaimer in front of that video because it was so gruesome and disgusting. I didn't want anybody that didn't actually have the mental capacity to understand that story to potentially watch it. And even if they did, it wouldn't have been on my conscience because I would have told them not to. And at that point, they're just like me whenever I was a kid who say, fuck you, I'm going to do whatever and just scare myself to fucking death. And now to the point where we literally have to fall asleep to scary stuff because it's just so ingrained into our brains that I am... Comedy and horror, and that is it. There is no in-between, it is one, it is the other, or it is both. Here we are. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, for instance, that story, I did that story. I put a disclaimer in front of that story. That story is not one that I will ever be doing again. That story is not one that I am proud that I did. That story is not one that I enjoyed di or that I did enjoy doing. It is one that I did for a reason. That story is a much better setup to a villain that I felt when I first, because Laughing Jack, as ridiculous as his first story may be, I have a special place in my heart for when that, first, for when that story first came out, the first one. And the only reason I did the origin story rather than rebooting the original is because the origin story, as gruesome and graphic as it is, is still a way better story than anything we got in the original one. It actually sets up why he does what he does, and it's actually kind of a tragic kind of backstory for a creepy pasta villain that, for one, really did deserved better treatment, and two, was never meant to be taken seriously. So the fact that they were able to make me take him even a little bit seriously is kind of commendable to the to the author Snuffbomb. And I love Snuffbomb stories. The thing is, is like you can't go around and say, "Oh, it's it's not it's it's okay for this person to do it." so it must be okay for everybody. That's like saying that just because the Joker glorified... Uh, people say it glorified violence, but it didn't. There, but it, it brought attention to mental illness in a way that no other movie I've ever seen has done so, at least not ones that are mainstream like that. There are movies like that, don't get me wrong, and I've seen them. I, if you've ever seen the movie Possum, then you know there are so many movies that are like that. But uh, maybe one day we'll get into some of those movies here on the channel. But um, that movie, for instance, is it's something that everyone thinks, oh, it's glorifying all this violence. It's glorifying all this mental illness. It's not glorifying shit. It's bringing attention to something that nobody brings attention to. Something that is very important in society and needs to have been brought to people's attention. There are, there are themes in The Origin of Laughing Jack that you can take away from. There are, be a good person. Don't learn from your parents if your parents are pieces of shit. Uh, fucking shit. Don't let your environment get you, or make you. Make your environment. Like, there's, there's some things in that story that stick out to me personally as somebody who's gone through a bunch of family shit. It just, there are things that you can take away from that story. 
What am I to take away from this? Tell me. Anyone. Anyone. Fucking anyone. Tell me. What am I to take away from this? Huh? What was the point? Is there a point? No. There's not. There's no point. And that's something that I really fucking hate about stories like this. Because it almost makes me not even want to finish it. I, I, I'm, go I'm goddamn near finished with it. So I'm gonna finish it just for the sake of finishing it and saying that I did it. But God, I won't like doing it. No, stop. Please stop. Pinky rolled her eyes. Putting down the hammer and tongs, she walked back in front of her friend and stared pensively at the broken Pegasus. Gilda didn't even cry this much when she had a live pair of sprites shoved down her throat. I don't know what that is. Pinky thought for a minute about what to do next, then had a sudden spark of inspiration. Rotating a wheel on the rack, Pinky laid Dash on her back, then moved Dash's hind legs, bringing the can with her. Picking up her tools, Pinky drove a searing hot spike of metal directly into the bottom uh, of Dash's hoof. As Dash yelled in pain, Pinky moved around and drove a second nail into the other hoof. Next, Pinky went back into the cart and located an enormous battery and controller, which she dragged over to where she was working. She tied copper wires between the terminals and the nails driven into Dash's hooves, then gave Dash a wink and flipped the switch. Electricity rocketed through Dash's body. The blue pony reacted immediately. Her body seized and her muscles snapped taut. Dash's hips thrust skyward. Her eyes rolled back and she let out a deep throat shedding cry. Throat shredding, whatever. Pinky giggled and danced in place, then reached down and turned up the juice. Dash convulsed uncontrollably and her bladder emptied once more. This is just disgusting at this point. I really want to get this over with. After about five minutes, Pinky shut off the power. Wisps of steam rose from the singed fur around Dash's hooves, and the area reeked of cooked flesh and burnt enamel. Pinky rotated Dash upright again and turned uh, and tried. Tried snap. Tried. Tried snap the drooling. Dash. Uh, po Pinky rotated Dash upright again and tried snap the drooling. Delirious, oh. No, no, it still doesn't make sense. I, 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 okay, I thought I just didn't finish the sentence. It still doesn't make any sense. Fuck me. Okay. Pinky rotated Dash upright again and tried snap the drooling Delirious Pony back to attention. I know what they were trying to say, but for fuck's sake, what is happening? Did, did you have a stroke when you wrote this? It would explain a lot. Dash, Dash, Rainbow Dash, wake up. Oh my god, I'm so fucking done with this story. Dash moaned and managed to give a modicum of weak acknowledgement. Oh, we're getting fancy with our wording now. It's a modicum. Pinky studied her handiwork, then reached into the medicine bag and produced a large syringe. All right, time for the last round. Dash focused blearily on the needle, which Pinky took a question as to what it was. This is a little something to take the pain away. Oh. Oh, is it? Pinky informed Dash as she walked around to her victim's ruined back. Dash flinched as Pinky jabbed the needle into the lower part of the blue pony's spine, moving in front of her friend again. Pinky leaned down and elaborated. In a few minutes, you won't be able to feel anything below your rib cage. Then you'll be able to stay awake to watch the harvest. Oh. Dash started to cry again. Pinky, she choked out. Yes, I want to go home. Yeah, I can see wanting to do that, replied the party pony. Sometimes I just want to give up. Just say, I'm done with this mess and go to bed. But you know what? You can't shrug off your responsibilities. Gotta pull yourself up and meet the challenges head on. That's the only way you're gonna get ahead in life. This is coming from a homicidal pony. 
who is eating her friend. Wise words of wisdom, kids. Take notes. Dash hung her head and cried. Minutes passed as the drug took effect. Eventually, Dash was completely numb from her chest to her flanks. At this point, Pinky approached with a scalpel. Glancing at Dash and smiling. By the way, we're going to be reading the rest of the story like this, so enjoy. <laughs> Glancing at Dash and smiling, Pinky made a long horizontal cut along the Pegasus's pony pelvis. Pony pelvis? <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't be laughing right now. <laughs> Just above her crotch. Why do we have to keep mentioning the damn pony's crotch? God damn it. It's not enough that you had the shit with her legs spreading open earlier and all the shit with the defecation in the urine. It's just not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough that you have cannibalism and terrifying depictions of pony death that PETA will probably come after me for because they're so horribly defiling. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Don't ever let Bionic Pig find this story, because uh, I don't think Peter Jones would be very happy. I just don't think he would. I am disgusted. I am truly, truly disgusted. <laughs> Not by the pony death. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course, by the pony death. Everything is disgusting in this, though. All of it. The whole thing. The whole thing. Moving up Dash's body, Pinky made a similar incision above her ribs. Finally, Pinky made a long vertical cut down Dash's stomach, connecting the first two. Looks like I got my eye on you, Dash. <laughs> don't ask me what that was. I don't know. I don't know anymore. With a moist... No! 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 Why did you have to say moist? That is the death of this story. Nothing else even matters now. You said the word moist. <laughs> moist! Why? You couldn't have said wet. You couldn't have said gooey. You couldn't have said anything that wasn't moist. With a moist. <laughs> no, hang on, hang on. There's only one way I can do that. Okay, ready? With a moist. <laughs> Gooey. With a moist. Gooey sound. <laughs> oh. The flaps of skin opened. The sight of her own organs and the lack of feeling caused Dash's breathing to intensify. Pinky carefully sliced open Dash's abdominal sac. Oh. I don't even want to... <laughs> What's an abdominal sack? I'm sorry, I'm much too tired to be doing this. God, I hope somebody enjoys this fucking shit. <laughs> Help me. This. <laughs> okay, so. Back to the abdominal sack. <laughs> and grabbed her large intestines. As she separated the organ from the rest of the digestive tract and pulled it out of the new cavity, Pinky grew jovial, laughing as she gutted her friend. Pinky began to make jokes. Has she not been doing that this whole time? Dash, growing weaker from this new source of blood loss, tried desperately to shut out the macabre comedy act. Okay, I have to... I have to, uh... Get into character. <clears throat> Look at me, I'm Rarity! Pinky laughed, slinging the intestinal tube around her neck and spraying blood in all directions. Is it my new scarf so pretty? Can 
Katie plays the ponies. <laughs> Just remember that Katie plays the ponies. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with you? You belong in a safe asylum! So do I! Anyways. Reaching back inside, she sliced the smaller intestine off from the bowels, squeezing out the excess excrement. Ah! Stop! Please! Pinky filed. Oh. I'm gonna be sick. A pinky. Filed the organ through her teeth. I dragged it back and forth. Dentists say you gotta floss every day, Dash. Well, of course. Who wouldn't flush their teeth with the intestines of their dead friend who also have shit in them? Am I still on Earth? Did it? Looks like it. Dash was barely aware of what was going on anymore. The shock was causing her to fade. Disappointed, Pinky dived back into her blue po er, dived back into the blue pony's guts, ramping up her routine. Ah, oh, don't go yet, Dash. Pinky started pulling out the rest of her organs, pausing with each removal. I know I can be a real pancreas. But you know I'm just kidney with you. You really got to learn to liver it up. Boy, these jokes are getting bladder. Guess you got to develop a stomach for them.
Pinky placed the discarded body parts into a bucket, keeping the last one for a bit longer. Ooh, bagpipes, she said, placing the end of Dash's esophagus in her mouth and the stomach in her armpit. She squeezed and a spurt of acid hit her tongue. Ew. Oh, hey, look, there's your cupcake, Dash. Dash didn't hear her tormentor. She had slipped into a state of unconscious, never-ending nightmare fuel because she's reading this stupid fucking story about a pony getting cannibalized by her own goddamn friend on a TV show made for fucking children. She had also slipped from consciousness minutes ago. Pinky, not yet satisfied, hit Dash with another adrenaline shot. Dash woke up for the first... Uh, uh, fuck, fuck me. Fuck me in the asshole. Fuck me hard. Dash woke up for the last time, her heart pounding. Warm blood flowed out from the wound in her chest in great spurts. It wouldn't be long now. It wouldn't be long now for me either. There is not much time I have left. God save me, please. Pinky brought Dash around onto her back again and straddled the blue pony's chest. Scalpel at the ready. You know, Rainbow Dash, I'm disappointed. I thought you would have lasted longer. I really wanted to spend more time with you before we got here, but I guess it's my fault. I should have taken it a little slower. Oh, well, it was really nice knowing you, Dash. The blade sunk into the blue throat and worked its way to Dash's chin. Coming back down, Pinky scalpel then circled Dash's neck. The last thing Rainbow Dash felt was her skin being cut away from her skull. And the middle of the screw... And the... In the middle of the blade scraping her teeth. Then she was gone. Pinkie Pie stared into the mirror. She had done a really good job, even keeping the eyelids. She winked, and Dash winked back. Pinkie smiled, but still, she was sad that her friend was now gone. Dash had now only lasted 50 minutes, not nearly as long as Pinkie had wanted. She looked back at the cadaver hanging in the center of the room, the last of her friend's fluids draining into a pan. Yup, no more rainbow, Dash. As she looked, Pinkie cocked her head. Cock. She... She began to notice blah, blah, blah. she began to take notice of the fact that there really wasn't much damage to the corpse. In fact, the pink pony mused. I think an idea exploded into her head. She was good at sewing and she had all the pieces. All she had to do was put them back together. Yeah, she just had to get some stuffing and bingo. She'd have Rainbow Dash forever. In fact, thought Pinky, that's what she'd do for all her friends when their numbers came. She was so excited. She skipped right over to the body with her skinner to get started. The cupcakes would wait. Pinkie Pie had a friend to make. Fuck me. There are not enough words in the known, any known languages to describe what we just read. There have been the Ben Drowns, there have been the Jeff the Killers, there have been the Weird Kids, the Gingerbread Men's, the Squidward Suicides, no, no. <sighs> this is by far the worst one yet. Now, I could do what a lot of other people do and just review stories that are already bad, that you know are bad, that are not supposed to be good, that were never written by competent writers. But I find it much better to review stories like this, to bring to the attention of the community that I am in that this is not good. This is not acceptable. This is not fucking writing. This is gory fan fiction. Let me just point something out to you, and I hate to keep doing this because everyone's gonna think I'm an egotistical fuck. But you know what? This motherfucker right here, this motherfucker right here, has hardly any gore 
at all. I've had one gory scene in my horror-themed novel. You know why? Because horror does not mean blood. It does not mean gore. It does not mean cannibalism and ripping of flesh and bones. That's why I don't find the evil dead scary. I find it disgusting and disturbing, but not scary. There is a very fine fucking line between scary and disturbing. Disturbing means that I may fear for you. I may think that you have something wrong with your fucking head. Somebody that scares me might make me think, oh, they're pretty smart. They scared me. They know what to do. They, they know how to scare people. How cool. What? A, there's. N I don't fucking worry about those people. Yeah, there are people that scare me like that that I, that I worry about, but the people that take the time to do this fucking shit and think that it's good or scary or anything, the fact that this was posted to the fucking internet for everyone to see for the rest of their lives, this is disgusting. And, you know what? We're going to do a live little experiment on here. Give me one second. All right. So I'm going to show you something. Right now, I am on my YouTube channel that is not on a premium channel. This is one of my old channels that I still have access to that I watch for uh, the purpose of watching other creators' videos on a channel that doesn't have basically an ad blocker just in case they don't make revenue from it. I know that they do, but whatever. Whatever the fuck. Sometimes I do it just so I can come back on here and do some stuff on a different account. But the point is, I have multiple accounts on here. I had started a gaming account before any of this ever started, and that's usually the account that I go to for a throwaway account. Anyways, my point is, I'm on my throwaway account, which means that ads are on. Now... I'm going to go to Mr. Creepypasta's channel. I'm already there, in fact. And I'm on the video Cupcakes. Now then, uh, YouTube has a very strict policy. They've been very strict with me in the past about certain things and, and, uh, and even saying some of the words that I say. Now, granted, there's no profanity in this if you want to be technical and say that profanity is only curse words. But let's just be rational adults and say that any kind of animal mutilation or mutilation of any type, whether it be alien, uh, animal, or human, or of any fucking life form, is not acceptable under the YouTube st uh, terms and conditions. But I want to show you something. And yeah, I am going to shit on Mr. Creepypasta for this. This is a pretty shitty thing to do whenever you run a, ch a channel that is primarily watched by children. You want to know why I know that, MCP? I was one of those kids. And look how fucked up I am now. Not saying it's a bad thing. I did that to myself. And it's on the parents to make sure that they can't watch this shit. But this, right here, come on, dude. There are certain stories even I won't post. And you are just gonna leave this shit up? This is from 2011. And you're still just gonna leave it there. I am gonna call you out. You don't even have a disclaimer in this video. This is absolutely disgusting. Like, come on, man. Yeah, I have some gory shit on my channel. Guess what? It's not for kids. I don't make it for kids. Yeah, kids listen to scary stories. But I don't make it directly for kids. I don't talk to my audience like they're children all the time. So we're going to show you this. This right here, just so you can see, that's the Cupcakes video right there. October 29th, 2011, 977,000 views. And what is playing as the ad? Oh, that's right. A Disney movie. Now granted, I know you don't control what ads show up on your shit. But I do know that what does not happen is you do not have YouTube put those ads on your video unless it's monetized. There are no ads on videos that aren't monetized. Videos like this, of stories like this, 
deserve to be demonetized. Do you want to know why? Because if YouTube is being fair, like they're supposed to be, they're going to demonetize this video right here of me being me and reviewing this simply because of the fact that I used profanity. But what they will not do is go demonetize this video from 2011 or better yet, make it age restricted. They won't do that either because he makes more money and he does a lot of, he gets a lot of traffic for them. A lot of very young, impressionable people who should not, kids who should not be hearing some of these things. And why am I saying this now? Why am I the white knight? Because, oh, I've posted terrible things too. Guess what? My channel was never meant to be for children or for anybody other than myself. I did that shit because I enjoyed it. Because it's therapeutic for me. I do it because it keeps me from going just a little bit less crazy every fucking day of my life. I never did that to be famous or to get the adoration of a ton of people. And I'm not saying he did it for that. I'm not. But what I am saying is, you have an obligation whenever you have stuff like this on your channel that you need to make sure people are at least aware of the content of the story before you do it. For instance... With my video on Laughing Jack and the disclaimer that is before it. There is not a lot of stories that I like to do that involve a lot of gore. In fact, one of the only ones on my channel that is very gory other than the origin of Laughing Jack is... Um, well, there's like a short story that's kind of stupid and gory, but that was when I was a young, stupid kid and I wasn't actually paying attention to any of the stories that I was I think I don't remember it was some stupid crappy pasta though so it's not relevant this is not a crappy pasta this is a mainstream video that has been watched by almost a million people crappy pastas nobody pays attention to those doesn't matter if they're terrible who fucking cares unless it gets brought up on Michael Leroy's channel or on uh, hoodoo hoodlums nobody even fucking knows about them so, uh, my point will stand about this. This is a mainstream story. This is a story you posted on the day before Halloween, two years after your channel had started. And at that point, I knew about you. I knew about you at this point. And when I heard this story, and I didn't know anything about it going into it, and you didn't tell me anything about it going into it? You know there's a lot of people that have a lot of problems with gore and shit. Oh, you could just click off when it gets to that. Bitch. Why did you have to post it? Why do you have to put this kind of stuff into the world? Once again, Origin of Laughing Jack has a few small things that can be taken away from the story and learned from it. You cannot learn anything from this story. This is not a story. There is no plot. There is no reasoning. There is no... Th there's an antagonist, but only because she's a fucking psycho. None of this makes any goddamn sense. No. I refuse to... I refuse to acknowledge that. I'm sorry. Not going to have it. It's not okay for you to do it. It's not okay for any of the narrators to do it. Stories like this right here that serve no purpose other than to be disgusting and out of the way gory and have no rhyme or resolution behind them don't need to be on the fucking internet. They're already bad enough that they're posted to these stupid sites where people can read them that's where they need to stay. They don't need to be narrated by huge fucking narrators who, ooh, you might not have been huge then. I don't care. You were big enough. 
You were big enough that in my bumfuck town in Texas here, I knew who you were. And I already- Oh, he's from Texas too. Yeah, I know that. I don't give a shit. Doesn't matter. I knew about him in my bumfuck town. That means he was big. I'm going to stop my rant right there. This is the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed me making a goddamn fool of myself for the past hour or so. And uh, do join me next time. I don't know when that will be. Don't ask me when that will be. I will not tell you when that will be. My lazy ass doesn't know when that will be. So have a nice night. Stay beautiful.